uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, July 11, 2017. Would you raise, uh, would you rise and join me saying the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Expense warrant 62017, $15,999.97. Ratify a payroll warrant for 62917, $265,763.20. Ratify a payroll warrant for 62917 for $40,520.04. Approve an expense warrant for 63017 for $6,591.23. Approve an expense warrant for 7117 for $247,043. Approve a school assessment payment number six for $2,063,865. How many seasonal workers do we have in this town right now? Uh, Highway boss is here. Can he answer that question? I saw two guys, two guys, one seasonal worker that I know of, and I saw another new guy. So we have a core fundamental budget for seasonal workers that is in terms of dollars, not in terms of positions. Six months. Six no, months. In terms of dollars, yeah. not of positions. But it's how many? Six months, right. 40 hours. How many seasonal workers do we have? And I saw four guys cutting grass. I mean, we were supposed to get one seasonal worker so the highway department can get their work done. One I saw one guy cutting and the other three standing there down in South Pond about two weeks ago. I know one of the gentlemen that has been mowing the lawns is one of these ones that doing a, he's doing a Senior, tax write-off. Yeah, the uh, veterans, the veterans, veterans work tax. off. I okay. think in fact, perhaps okay. two of them are, but at the end of the day, and I got a, at least one of them is work off. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the seasonal worker is budgeted against dollars. If we don't, yes, have I was on the advisory work, board, Beth. I know. If we don't have somebody that can work forty hours and it takes two people twenty hours to get the work done, then that's what happens. So you don't that's, need to worry about how many individuals are hired against the particular budget. As long as that budget isn't overspent, it's really of no concern as long as the work gets done and it doesn't exceed the budget. Okay, well, I, like I said, I'm going to go back. Your propaganda is well taken, as usual. 
I saw three three guys down on South Pond. One guy was cutting and two were standing there. I mean, how many guys we need cutting grass in our town here? We were supposed to have one seasonal worker take care of the lawns. Because, as our highway boss said, he's too valuable. He was one of the people down on South Pond cutting the grass. So what's what's up? Well, I mean, what are we getting done in, in the town here is what I want to know. Where's the management? That's a different question. So first of all, what's getting done is a different question. Than how many okay, but let's, well, let me ask you, why do we have two, three guys out there cutting grass? When there's so much to be, there's so much, we don't have time. There's so much to be done. Why do we get the whole crew out there cutting grass? Well, Mr. Chafee, would you like to yeah. answer that question? Well, first of all, I'll let him answer a question for me. All right. Two three people standing there, Mr. John David Holbrook. You. You were one of them, and then there was a seasonal worker standing there, and one other seasonal worker was actually doing the work. Oh, well, guess what? That's the answer. There was one seasonal worker standing yep. there doing the work with a full time person from the highway. Pond. Two. John David Holbrook. Two guys standing there. You were one of them, and someone else in there. I had to stop in to see what was going on because mm -hmm. I had to go over there, period. You all seem to have equipment in your hands, so. so what's the, all so I'm if asking they you had is. equipment in their hands, they were working. Right. Instead of standing. They were in the parking so, lot. Beth, don't try to defend them. No, they were in the no, parking the lot. The story's changing. So. The story's not changing. So I said two people were standing there, one guy was working. Was for what period of time was there any exchange going on? You know, you can take a snapshot in time at any moment. Yeah, that's right. He was, he was stopping in to verify that the work was getting done to standard. He's a supervisor. That, yeah, we can, we, you know what? You can do the propaganda, but you know what? I want to know why we got two, three guys cutting grass is my question. Because there's two, three guys worth of work if those people are not full time. They're so, so we were supposed and to have one guy, you, one guy happened. cutting grass, Beth. So yes, but if you have if you have people that are doing work off programs, they've been helping with the grass. That's fine, but not other people full time from the highway department. So it's not. So basically, we have the budget, we have the work to do. It's up to the highway superintendent how okay. to assign his people in order to get the work done. <clears throat> And to prioritize it. That's not okay. Just bear this in mind. On the six, we have six months. So when the seasonal work is started, we're back in the all done in, November. in six yeah, months. And, okay, and we'll just make. You have you know just, what you have is a budget. And the budget, and yes. We have X number of dollars. If, it, if it's spent in three months or it's spent in six months, it stops getting spent. That's correct. When the funding is spent. Yeah. Right. That's the way that it works. Right. If okay. if it works properly, and, and you know it's not going to work that way, Beth. Well. I don't know that. No. Because I do on past experiences. No, because actually, past experiences. All right, I made. All right, I made my point. I made my point. Okay, what's the next one? Okay. I'd like to know why you didn't reappoint the secretary on the advisory board. She didn't put in for it. As far as I know, she did. She told me she did. I didn't. I didn't see anything. She wanted to be on. There was an appointment slip there for her. Yeah. I didn't see that she had put in a letter to be reappointed. No, I don't really remember what she put in the letter either, but I know that. The she put in the letter. She put it in. I didn't see I didn't any letter that they were So no one, no one I, wants to. I don't recall anything, mm -hmm. but I, I will look it up. Look it up. We're going to look up. I mean, she put it in. I'm going to look up in the email, see if she sent me an email. We had a, uh, we because had a, I usually we had touch a, everything. We had, a lot of, we had a lot of different people this year that put in to be on the advisory board. And we appointed a lot of different people. We thought some new blood on the advisory board would okay. be good. Okay, that's my point. But now you have a whole advisory board, and no, there's only one person that knows anything. Beth's in there trying to trying to show them what what a uh, municipal transfer is. No one knows anything now. No, actually, I was in there. And you're trying to we standardize the information that was going out to the advisory. Well, we have two members. You were in the. I was in there. You were in there explaining to them what a municipal transfer was. So don't try to keep putting this propaganda and trying to explain things. No, that's good, but Beth had served on right. the board once before and we do have two members on the board that are veteran board members. You have one person on the board that has experience. The other two that are trying to be chairman only showed up 50% of the time. So what I'm trying to say is you have an advisory board now with very little knowledge, so it's pretty much the way you want it because then you can they'll do what you want and that's not the idea of the Dave, advisory Dave, board Dave, it's not that way at all okay These people come a lot of them come from the financial world and they mm. and they've been once i think one is not, was a retired accountant yeah and i know some other people have some banking industry they've got uh, 
a lot of skills lot that we haven't skills. seen so in a long okay. time. They also have a former selector. I didn't see them. knows what a municipal transfer is. It's just in order to make sure. I don't want the full burden of getting. No, but I'm just saying, right. So that's why I'm just, my point is that's all good. Everything, that's good. Mm -hmm. and, and that's great for the town. But when you have you have a good secretary who was very dependable, not not reappointed, and you got hardly anyone that has any knowledge on the board, that's my point. I'm trying to make. We do have one woman that's on the board. She's you know? been on for many many years. On the she advisory has, board. Yeah, she has a lot of history in this. Okay, time. that's good. But I'm just saying, from what has been taking place, there's no one but one person right now that knows what's going on. We have this. Three yeah. Farmer don't don't members. frown, Beth. I mean, they're all new. This you just said that. Three former members on the board. Right. Right. So you've got you've got Barbara Wilson. But you've she's not Bob there. Barbara's, Barbara's not. Okay. Well, Barbara she won't be there. She on Bob being. Barnes is the only one, that, and then so, you have two other so, people, three other people. So you've got Bob Falter, who's who's been on, who understands what's years, going on for two years, years now. now. We've got. He, Bobby un, he started. Well, why were you ex many years. okay? Why are you explaining what municipal transfers were then? Because we did have at least two brand new people in the room, mm -hmm. and. Sometimes people's understanding is a little bit different from going back to the book. Mm. And I'm a big fan of going back to the book and specifically, you know, taking taking it straight out of the municipal finance booklet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people start to say, well, this is what we do and this is how we've always done it. Instead of saying, this is what the state law says and this is what we ought to be following for a procedure. It used to drive me absolutely Batty while I was on the advisory that people had their own perception of what we've done in Brookfield right. and not necessarily right, but that's... what state law dictates. Okay. So then there's the so, other so form of members. To, one way to improve the communication is to have a selectman attend and uh, for the people who want the information like the brand new people to do a real short mm. bullet of training each meeting in order to say, hey, this is what's right in front of us. Here's what the calendar ought to look like. Here's what the next activities are for the state. I don't need. I don't need a lesson on on all that. Okay. I'll just ask right. a question. Well, you're one of the people that tends to contribute to that drift of this is the way. I no, that's to no. Do it it's just it, it is a municipal says. transfer. It was a municipal transfer. It's not what you want to so make it. So it was a it was a five you know? minute introduction to it. And you should have had someone in on the one of the former members explain it. Because they can relate to to the other members that are there. Okay, all right, we'll take that under yeah. advisement. What, okay, what else do yeah. we have? What's what's going on with Friday now? You close Fridays, the town hall. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. How are people? How are we going to go back like two, three years ago? When we had that assistant treasurer, assistant secretary. How she she didn't even she got a free eight hours every every week. And we can, how are the people going to be working their hours? That do work cool. on Fridays. Well, um, well, I decided that originally it was a, a choice whether to work at home or put me out. I decided last week that what I'm going to and what I've been doing this week is I have a schedule so that I'm putting in all the 40 mm -hmm. hours between mm -hmm. Monday and Thursday, and then I'll just take Friday off. Then there won't be any controversy whether I'm working on Fridays. And, and on the off time, I'm going to come in early in the morning when the town hall's already open, so I'm not wasting electricity. I'm going to work on my minutes then, and I'm going to stay late Wednesday night and stay till 5 the other nights and, and late Wednesday night and work on my minutes then. So it's not interfering. That's good, because working at home doesn't work. Well, plus, I don't want to have to be able to have people think I'm not working. Well, that's what happened so a few years back, right? That's what happened a few years back. I think, they, you know, I think some of the other ones have changed their hours too. But say if somebody want decides that they want to come in here on a Friday and do some work, they're allowed. You know, they're allowed to come in and do it because a lot of time our former um, DC treasurer, she used to be in here on, all day on Friday working S with catch up. But I mean, the town hall will be locked. Because what would be what for what safety happens, reasons, right? Yes. Yeah, so what happens when Which is good. Was here on Fridays? A lot of time, people would come in and they'd want to, you know, pay these bills and you know different bills like this, and they want to say something from the town clerk, and Karen couldn't help them out, so they would leave very frustrated. So we thought the best thing to do was to close the town hall on Fridays. Okay, so so the people that uh, have currently been working Fridays, they're not going to be working from home, right? Because that's a bad practice. We got into that no, years they're ago. they're not working from home. If they they're going to make their hours up. Yeah, like, what do you mean, who make yeah, And you don't get to Well, whoever's, like practices. the treasurer used to come in on Fridays, and, and Karen used to come in. The tax collector used to come in. 
And she's I don't know. Going to, she's extending I don't know. her hours. She, 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 well, she has been. She has she's been. been working till five every night, so she's already. And then Wednesday, Wednesday she's here till eight, right? And she's here till eight. Eight o'clock, o'clock on Wednesdays. So it's really just when the treasurer comes. Yeah, in. the treasurer, and, and if the treasurer wants to come in on a Friday and you know lock all the doors, she can come in. Uh, she can come in on a Friday. Okay, but okay. So what, I guess my point is the practice is we're not going to be working from home. Because that don't work no, and it doesn't no, happen. No, going to be working okay. from home. Because we're just going backwards now. Okay. All right. Thanks for the uh, discussion. Does anyone else have anything for public access? Mr. Ted? Good evening. Good <clears throat> night. And I have two things. The first one is in reference to the South Pond Beach. The floats aren't out. And it's been pretty heavily used. And I thought that the floats I were thought, supposed to be I out. I thought the Recreation Committee usually put the floats <clears throat> And just the last time I saw them, they, they laid on the beach all, all winter. So I don't even know what kind of condition they're in. They're usually, uh, what, by July 4th? It's supposed to be after the what is it the week after the Memorial week. Day or oh, whatever yeah, it is. Memorial, because right. I know that they usually. Yeah. They usually yeah. Well, they send a note to Jeff. Yeah, yeah. We'll just send a note just to Jeff. double check and okay. Okay. see if they have sure. that in the on their agenda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing is, um, and I can either talk about it now or I can wait until you get to capital uh, um, planning, and that's in reference to the water department's vehicle. Seeing as there was kind of an issue with the fire department vehicle, I just want to be sure what I need to do, what the water commission needs to do in order to purchase the vehicle. What is that procedure book? Is the procedure forms updated for the capital? Um, no, we haven't put the forms no. in yet, but Carrie has the latest forms. Yeah, Carrie okay. has so the latest one. Yeah. Carrie, Carrie does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I go in and see Carrie. And yeah, because she. Get okay, it's not that it's going to happen. You know, immediately anyway. Yeah. I just want to be sure okay. that. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. We're seeing that um, we don't have. Wasn't Kermit going to come in? I left a message for him because he didn't answer the phone, so I don't know if he got it. Asking him to come in early if he can. Obviously, he didn't get it. Or didn't okay. Well, why don't we move on to the signing of the um, human resources grant from the community compact? All right. And I'd like to entertain a motion for the chairman to sign. You have that motion. I'll second. Excellent. Work. Any discussion? No. Yeah. Great to get it going. Now we have, have we shared with everybody what that's going to constitute? You want to check the scope of work is in the background. Okay. We're up. All right. Here, if Mr. Snyder would like to read this, he can. If you would like me to. If you don't mind, while I'm signing. Is that, is that, no, that's not, it's at the very end. Oh, the scope is, is the, that is the scope. Is that the scope of work? Yeah. yeah. And here's, and here's oh, there's, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's another one. Too. That, yeah, that's Oh, really maybe good. this is the better one to read. Yeah, okay. The scope of work of the HR Consult, uh, again, this is a com community compact, so it's money that can come to us from uh, the state to improve efficiencies within the town. And a human resource consultant is responsible for providing a high level of support in the implementation and administration of a human resource program, project, or policies. The consultant's main role will be to establish an official HR policy for the town of Brookfield to assist in the creation of a personnel handbook. In addition, the consultant is expected to undertake a variety of HR duties which include, but are not limited to, offering advice and recommendations regarding HR matters, formulating practical, pl uh, practical plans to address HR issues, and to present training sessions on complex HR policies and procedures. Step forward. Thank you. 
remember at 4 30 and he said he was going to be here early. Um, okay. If he doesn't make it, I have a copy of the information that he was going to cover with us actually uh, electronically. Oh. Well, he's on the agenda after the right. to license. So if he, if he doesn't show up by the end of the meeting, I can at least share the meat of the information that was, it was part of a, a, a small working group meeting within the CIPC. Why don't we move on to we'll do a uh, municipal transfer? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is from the water department from the water superintendent James Booz. The amount of the transfer was $1,117.91, and it's going to come from the water casual labor account and it's going into the water superintendent's cell. Let's make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 These are some appointments, and I would like to make a, uh, entertain a motion to do the appointments of um, Stephen Pariso. Yes, he's going to be on um, the board of directors for the uh, dispatch overseers. I know you appointed Michael, but <coughs> he down, but he didn't want it, and Steve did want it, so okay. we switched it over. Okay, that's and also the, um, the bylaw committee. Okay, and now this is the assistant. We have an assistant animal control officer, and uh, his name is Sidney Plant, and he is. Oh, it's a girl, Sidney Plant. Oh, okay. We have appointments to the uh, bylaw committee. James Cook, Barbara Wilson, Robert Barnes, and Harry Pearson, and Tara Brown. So I'd like to entertain a motion to appoint these. Would they have one more? You have that motion. <coughs> okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 about the bylaw committee because they haven't been terribly active in the past. Are there any particular areas that we'd like to at least actively communicate uh, or charter them with looking at between now and the special town well, meeting? There, there is a charge. There is a charge for them right. out there. And they can just, um, like, uh, if anybody comes forward to you know, like a bylaw, you know, they usually come to them and they review it and then they decide if they want to have, you know, put it on a meeting. And uh, did did we want to have them review the one uh, we had on the for the advisory board? We should probably we should have do that. Yeah, we should have them review that one. The, the other, uh, the probably important one, is back to the HR stuff. Is that yeah. We have bylaws that are related mm -hmm. to HR yeah. that need to be modified, modified. Um, especially if we're going to have a working procedure. Right. So, so I think that if there's a priority there, as this HR thing kicks off, that that would be probably about number one. For me, anyway. So we may want to yeah, let them know that that's coming, yeah. have a conversation yeah. with them, let them know that that's coming down. Yep. Okay. Now I would like to uh, entertain a motion to sign a cemetery deed. Oh, you have that motion. Second. Go on to uh, 
if we want to finish it up. Do you have anything under other? Um, I did have one thing. Um, found a couple of flammable cabinets, secondary market from a secondary market vendor, 60-gallon um, capacity. Uh, they look like they would meet the needs of the highway department. We can get two of them for $1,000, uh, which is about, yeah, it's a lot less than new. They'd be like $900 each. These mm -hmm. are $500 each picked up. Um, we do have to send somebody out to Raynham to go pick them up. Highway superintendent said he was on board with it. Now, where are these coming from? They're coming from Raynham, Mass. It's a place called, uh, I think it's, uh, look up the, uh, the company. It's, uh, I think it's American Material Handling Corp or something like that. They, they specialize in used uh, warehouse equipment. If there's somebody I've worked with in the past, they yeah. usually have real quality stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, um, they happen to have some come in that are good. like good size, good condition. So um, I just wanted to I, I wanted to ask for a motion to go ahead and allow the treasurer to cut a check or the uh, accountant to to t accept it off of the bid and cut a check against the bid so that um, they could actually hand carry a check when they go pick them up. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that way we can get the all the math and accounting done in advance and we'll be able to get those. So, um, And then uh, I was going to just double check if uh, um, I sent just a preliminary inquiry to Sturbridge because I had heard that they finally had a facility for, for mm -hmm. holding stray animals uh, and it had been an issue that was raised uh, by the folks who were filling in when our ACO was off was that we don't currently have a facility and none of the surrounding communities mm -hmm. do. Um, Sturbridge is a, that they are at least willing to discuss what kind of terms or conditions yeah. they would have. I talked to him, I talked to the town manager today, and he called up. Yeah. And he said, I guess the one that handles the water that down there also is he's the chief of police. Okay. Tom Ford. Yeah, Ford. Sure. He does it. Oh, wow. So he's yeah. So he said he would be willing to sit down. He said he's from Karen, Karen, and I, and I said also. The Probably the end control officer. Sarah, and we'll discuss that possibility. Yeah. He said they could probably work with us until we get one. Until we get one, right, exactly. And exactly. Sarah was pretty excited to hear that anybody had one, so. So we'll have to, we can probably set something up then to get together with him. That'd be great. Sure. So, did you want to take point on uh, yeah. negotiating that? Yeah, I'll, I'll go down. Sure. You know, Karen and I, if Karen takes some time because he said, you know, we all want to come down and talk. So that, that says that the West Brookfield the idea of them adding on is a bad idea. It's yeah. not going to happen. Okay. And then I, then I don't think that they want that. They don't want anything going on the dump or right. the landfill. Mm -hmm. They don't want I, anything down I don't know. There were a couple of other sites that, that we had considered, um, or at least that we were talking about. Is, is there any opportunity on any other property in town besides the transfer station? Well, where we, well, wherever we put it, we have to have, I think you have water, have water electricity, and then uh, in the summer you have to have the air conditioning, in the winter it has to be heated, so right. I don't know if it's any place we'd have to run lines to do all this. Herb? Actually, they have, they have, um, is Herb going to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. They, they have prefab buildings that you just can run power and water to them. Um, that you can get that, that meet all of the state requirements. Um, but we have to figure out what kind of traffic it would have. But then we'd have to find out where we want to put it, so okay. of course not going to bother people. Well, I think the regional perspective is best. Yeah, if, I if, if we can have a regional yeah. response, that's yeah. probably right. best for was, all of us. Was West Brookfield looking at, at establishing one? Or no, no, that over in West Brookfield had spots, and we have used them in the past. Right. And, the que and the question was, were they interested in adding on because it was based on capacity? Mm -hmm. right. And so if they were interested to add on, that might be a way to fill those uh, counts. Okay. So that was that idea. But, but Sturbridge is willing to, to help us out. You know, I think it's worth to go down and talk to them about Well, it. and I think it, it stressed the whole nature of a regional mm -hmm. response yeah. because we do need to do something. Okay, I'm saying that the permit is here. Yeah, three minutes. Permit, can you have your uh, discussion with us in three minutes because we have the bid opening? Or do you want to wait? We have the bid openings for the bridge, so can you do your discussion in three minutes? 
start. Oh, we can, we can actually, oh, we, can, we can start late for the bid opening. We just oh, can't start before it. It's 7 1 already. Oh. We've, got to, we've got to do it because we looked up the protocol for it today. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'd like to entertain, entertain a motion to open the uh, bid openings at 701. You have that motion. Second. Okay. And we see two bids came back because I think it was a couple of weeks ago we had three people that came in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because I had come in. And Are those two bids from three, the, any of the people who were here? What's in it? Are the two bids from people? Yes, the people, the yeah, they're the two people yeah. that they were here. So I think that would be appropriate that the highway superintendent and administrator come forward and assist can, us. Yeah, you can assist us. I'll open them and you can look them over too and see what you think. Northern Construction Service. They're from 7, 775 Pleasant Street, Unit 11 from Weymouth, Mass. Okay, their total bid is two hundred and seventy-one thousand seven hundred dollars. This one is from New England Infrastructure Incorporated at 13 Brent Drive, Holden Mass. And their total bid is $332,200. So that's the, the activity that, now that's is to the an, activity analyze, analyze these. Analyze them. Oh, this has to go Do you all want copies of them before they go to the engineer? Or? We, we need the originals. Yeah, yeah they need the originals. originals. He said he wanted copies. That's what he told me. Does he want the originals? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think so. No, no, he no, he wants no, we, we need to keep the originals. Yeah. Yeah. He wants copies of them. Copies of them. So uh, I would like a motion to uh, take the bids under advisement and, and uh, accept submitted bids and take them under advisement. Do you have that motion? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So now, given that we have them in hand, is there any action that we need to take yeah. tonight no. as you do the analysis? No, because we got to take and uh, go over all of them and make sure everything's in line and stuff. So we have the funding available to we're going to have to uh request some chapter 90 money to uh complete the project and i got a project request here we'll just have to uh we're going to get this to mike and make sure which ones we're going to go with and everything and then we'll have to get the uh, project request filled in the rest of the way for the difference with uh, 15 percent on top of that because that's how the state wants it done okay, so we have to match it with 15 percent. no 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 when you do a project request with Chapter 90 money on a project, road work project, we need 15% on top of what the project approximately would cost. 15% safety factors. So you know you have the funds available. Yes. In case you need 
piece so, runs over. Yeah. So the fifteen percent does that come from the town? No, that that's all, that's just all chapter nine. It's all chapter. Yeah. Nine. Okay. So would it be appropriate to have a discussion on chapter nine money tonight? We can, if you want, Perfect. if we have time. But uh, you may want to close the bid opening right now. Yeah, okay. I'd like, okay. I'd like a motion to close the bid. Okay. You have that motion. Second. Any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to say 706. Yeah, closed it. That's it. Yeah, 706. So are you going to get that up to the engineer? Is that what you said? Yeah, we'll make copies of it tomorrow and stuff here at the town hall, and we'll get it uh, mailed out overnight to them so we can get it done. Just spare copy just for curiosity and education. Sure. Right. So really it's the status of, of Chapter 90 monies and what those major projects are, especially with a capital improvement person sitting in the audience that might be interested to understand uh, where we are with different uh, chapter funding. Speak up a little louder. Thank you. Okay. So, do we have any um, rough estimates on the material portion for the um, plan for summer 2017? For this summer 2017? Yep. We are doing the uh, crack seal and micro seal on the roads up here in the center of town. That uh, we did a project request of. Can I ask a question before we get started? Sure. So you're at how much funding that's available to us under Chapter 90? This year it's uh, right around 560. I want to say 550. So we've accrued 550 thousand dollars. Yes. That we have available now. Does that include the bridge or not? No. No. So the bridge is separate money that we can request. Yes. Okay. So that we're in what? excess of the 550. Yes. Okay. And we we did a project request earlier this year to uh, do uh, these streets in the center of town to try to save them a little bit longer. Yeah. That's 150. That's on the uh, books right now, out of the no, 550. Out of the 550. Right. So you're so, above 400,000 that you right. have available to you. Exactly. And then then we, we with that 400,000, then you you start working the crack seal. Um, oh, we see the Denbrook Bridge now. What the, is that? I'm confused now. Just help me. On right now on chapter chapter 90 that's available to the town of Brookfield. We 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 get five hundred fifty thousand dollars. All right. Out of that five fifty, one hundred fifty of it is to the streets here in the center of town to okay. try to preserve these streets a little longer. All right. So you take the five fifty minus the one fifty, we're down to four hundred call. Mm -hmm. Once we figure out what we're doing with the uh, the uh, bids here from the bridge, yeah. we're going to have to do a project request of the difference to take and uh, use Chapter 90 money to uh, get the bridge completed and stuff. So we're looking at probably another 150,000 or so out of Chapter 90 money. Okay, I'm guessing. So they get you back to the three, three. Yeah, roughly. Okay. It'd be two something, about two fifty. Two, two something. So. And we already appropriated two hundred fifty thousand, didn't we? For no, no, it was no. only one twenty-five or something. Oh, like was that. it? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. And we're down under a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, available. about ninety-five now. But that was the pre-engineering stuff. Correct. Yes. Oh, all right. Okay. So, given that, if we then come to Sawmill Bridge and uh, the ca uh, catch basin stuff. How far do, do we end? We like don't. Uh, the bridge in Chapter 90, uh, the bridge in the catch basins, we won't use any of the Chapter 90 money. That's all town funds and stuff town there that's okay. already there. So, so then it really does say that the idea of replacing the loader is 
the next thing on the list. That's correct. Is that something we should be thinking about tonight or? Well, we need to look at it somewhere down the line. There is no question about it. Okay. And I see you're thinking about leasing the vehicle for three years. Is that That's the, the, we've done that before with the highway department, do a lease purchase on the equipment. That way we're not tying up a whole years of chapter 90. We're only tying up a portion of it. So a question on, now we're, we're not t talking FY18 yet. So you're, would, you would be expecting FY18 money as well? Yes. And what kind of money are we talking for FY18? Probably somewhere, in that, again, probably around 150 on chapter nine. Oh, so this is still FY17 money? Yes. Oh. So come next, next April, we'll, we'll receive more money from the state and everything else about approximately 150. Good. So if any surprises were to come up, we've got a cushion. That's correct. Even if, even if we were to go off and do the loader. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Is there any possibility that uh, I, I don't like doing it this way, but uh, get you guys to sign the uh, project request for that uh, the bridge? So once we figure out what's going on, we can get that paperwork sure. filled out and get it Absolutely. to the state ASAP. Okay. I make a motion to sign. There, ne there is, needs to be two originals there. I'm sorry. There's, There's two, two copies, copies, but they have to be both be originals. So who needs to sign all three? Or? So do we need to make a motion hmm? to have the uh, uh, chairperson. 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 Yeah. chairperson? But you all three need to sign the environmental punch list, which is the third page. Okay. The third page. So let's make a motion that we sign the. I'll second. Second. Mm -hmm. Any favor? Aye. 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 Oh, the townspeople no, already know about it. We'll read it, it, so. it I, I'll, I'll read it. The crack and seal microsurface portions of the following streets River Street, Common Street, Central Street, Lower River, Howard Street, Lincoln Street, Lincoln Street Extension, Sherman Street, and Pleasant Street. And that's going to be crack sealed? Crack sealed and microsurface portions of the following streets. For $150,000. Yep. Sounds like a lot to me. $150,000. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said $450,000. No. Under 50, I just, to me, that sounds like a lot. So. Well, I know you got a lot of experience in doing that type of work, Dave. That's why I rely on people that have the experience that I call yes, out I and have them give me a quote on it Thank you for that before comment. we go out for bids. Thank you for that nice comment. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. Yes, it's very much so. It, it's very, it's very useful. It'll be a useful tool for the uh, CIPC as well. Um, if you if you have at least some rough estimates for the future plan portion, you know where you know well, this is like about 150. Yeah, the thing is, is you. I, some of this the, you might not know until you get into. Well, closer to that time to do it and stuff. You know, within six or eight months you'll have a better estimated cost on it. Right. If you could ballpark it today dollars, though, uh, it does at least be, help from a standpoint oh, yeah, yeah. Of, of just from a municipal Cindy? planning Cindy. perspective. Let's make sure we sign the right one. Okay. Line. Okay. Yeah. Do I sign under Yeah, it's something yeah. that we do. Yeah, it, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and no one's going right. to come back and say, gee, you yes. gave this yes. estimate in 2017, okay. and, and I'll say it to the camera yeah. so yeah. that yeah. Yeah. you know I'm honest about it, is that we're not going to come back and say, hey, you said in 2017, now it's 2019, and it's 10% higher, someone's going to get off. It, right. it happens, you know, price of oil and stuff, things change right. when you're doing you know, road or, work. Or you get the engineer out there to do the plan, mm -hmm. and it turns out it's a bigger project mm -hmm. than what you originally thought it was. But from a standpoint of the municipal planning, it's important for them to at least have, like, kind of at least a rough ballpark. Right. Um, you know, likewise, that's a fair number of miles of road, actually, for the inside of town with it being you know, inclusive of, of all of those streets. It's, so it's pretty easy to see where you get that number. Yeah. So, all right, thank you. But if you, you could, know, if you could. Some, some people think, you know, you name off those streets here and everything else, they're going, well, that ain't very much. Well. Actually, when you do yeah. the road miles. If you do the road miles, it's a lot. Yeah. So. 
Well, do you know you. what the road miles is when you consider all those streets? About it was uh, about, about twenty between twenty five and twenty seven thousand feet. So it's so about five thousand per fifty two hundred to a mile. Miles. So, so it's about five miles. Five miles worth of road work. Yeah. So, so that's where people get too uh, aggressive and figuring that it can yeah. go for go on a cheap. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the math. Yeah. So. We also have the state salt bid, which yeah. needs to be signed. Oh. Okay. Oh, Linda, we need another motion to oh. sign. So salt, the, this salt. is, uh, <coughs> I, I'll make a motion that we uh, sign the state salt bid because you basically we get the best price by going with the state yeah. price. Oh, no, okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Yeah. Anything else I would tonight? We're at the moment, no, I guess. Unless you want to sign a another project request, but that's besides the point. But I think yeah. people want no, to talk once, about it. People probably want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. When is the uh, next meeting that we can discuss that? Uh, we're, 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 yeah, we're meeting on the 25th again. All right. Is that okay from a project from a timing perspective? perspective is if, uh, is there any other people that have to be involved with it that want to discuss? I would think not. Right. The sub, we're talking the bridge, right? No. The, the uh, you sorry. said something about the loader at the time. Oh, oh. To discuss that to, down the line. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We wanted to. All right. Yeah. I would think we would want to do that. If it's not the next meeting, a meeting soon after. Yeah, soon after. Yeah. Uh, there's a meeting of the CIPC on the 19th. If you could provide the information about what you're going to be doing with the loader, mm -hmm. to, or what your goal is to do with the loader to CIPC as well, so right. you just review the request, that would be important that we start routing stuff through them as well, so they understand what's going on with the fleet and, and what the need is, and what your recommendations for funding are. Okay. Actually, by August 1st, according to our timeline, mm -hmm. we're going to go to all departments and give, have them give us the current information about capital expenditures for FY18 and FY19. Just stuff. And we've got a very detailed timeline, and we'll be working with those people. So by August 1st, we'll be sending out a letter to all departments, including her, and we'll have a designated liaison one or two liaison people working with each of the departments we do work with that. As we have in the past, mm -hmm. we've done that and it's worked fine and hopefully it'll continue to work that way. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Kermit, do you we have to start our um, class two license at seven thirty, so can you uh, have your little discussion done by then? Yeah, yes. I said Kermit. Come on up here, Kermit, Come on so you up. can hear us. Yeah. I got bad hair in uh, You're going to discuss with us the capital expenditures for FY18. Yeah, uh, just a very quick update. The CIPC had uh, just a couple of meetings, and subsequent to that, we've identified what our mission responsibilities are, uh, a timeline to get things done, and how we're going to work with the departments. And we'll be getting that information out to the select board. Uh, and again, we have a meeting on the 19th, and we're going to be talking about that. Uh, what the request tonight that I have is, are there any capital expenditures from the select board's account that will be on the uh, town fall town meeting? I think the only yeah. thought is this building. Yeah. And again, it, the, it was the furnace approved last year. The furnace, the expenditures for the furnace. So the, yeah, funding. Yeah, yeah that, that came was, out of last year. So, so, okay, so that so okay. Or it was so, allocated out of last yeah. year's. So funds. that's not. So, so there won't be anything coming up at the well, fall we, meeting. Well, the up. fall meeting might be the stair lift. Yeah, yeah I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. The, the stair lift. If we bring that up. Let me let me bring you up up to date on the, the chair lift. Uh, I, we've met with Bill Simpson. And I've contacted the AAB board, and uh, based on what they're 
they've told me verbally, and I don't want to take this as gospel, but it sounds like perhaps an incline, incline chairlift may be okay and not require an elevator for the town hall. Uh, uh, I've passed it back to Bill, and his committee is going to investigate further. Uh, I, thought, I think it's their responsibility to look at that. And I know Mr. Holcraft has talked about that, but an inclined chairlift may not require AAB approval even, or a ADA approval. They said that they would get involved if there was other construction work going on at the time. But uh, uh, I don't want to take that, again, I don't want to take that as gospel, here's the verbal conversation. So uh, Bill Simpson's committee is going to take the lead on uh, that project. Um, so that's that on that, if there's any questions about that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Did you have one? Point. Did that other furnace ever get fixed from this past winter? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the funding was set aside, but it's All not right. done yet. Now, has, Mr. has Bill Simpson, we haven't appointed a committee yet for him, have we? We did. We did. We did two meetings ago, mm -hmm. but he was out of town, and they're oh, just now maybe scheduling. I wasn't at that. Was that the one I Yeah, you missed that. No. Okay, yes. I missed that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so he's charged. Okay, so he's so, got the charge, and he's so, got so, the charge. They just got to schedule. Basically, they need to schedule their how first many, meeting. Did he get, get enough? Organized. How many members? Was five members. Oh, got five members. Good. They, they, they did say that putting an inclined chairlift would require uh, approval by the building uh, Jeff Taylor's office, yes. mm -hmm. and it may require some sort of a variance. But once he gets past that variance, as I understand it, we're we're clear. But again, that was you get all of it in writing. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Cause absolutely. Because absolutely. what they say depends on who you get from the board. By the yeah, way. well, yeah. There's only uh, two members now. One one has resigned, so there's only uh, two people at, on the a AAB board right now. So we got to get it in writing. So again, I pass the burden back to the committee. That's their responsibility. And if we can get approval to do that, that would be that would be wonderful. I mean, but we're saving a lot of money. Yeah, if that if that could happen, and, and we could and we could start forward with some of the, the yes, other pieces yeah, absolutely. Once, once we can get access. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? Uh, That's it. Anything Anything else more from your committee you'd like to report? Uh, no. Yeah, again, we will be back with the department heads, the select board, the advisory committee. And we've identified what we think our responsibilities are, our mission is, and uh, our timeline to get things done. And uh, we'll be approving that at hopefully our 19th, meeting on the 19th, and get that out to everybody. So what we would also like to do, and we've talked about it, is in the financial policy routines, to add your charge, your idea of what you're going to be doing in that book so it's very clear to everyone as far as what your activities are and, and how it impacts the financial uh, good so the town so okay. i appreciate what you're doing yeah. all right thank you you're welcome okay thank you we still got a few more minutes so we'll move on to our correspondence we have some correspondence from chatter communication this is dear municipal officials this letter gives notice that the following changes will be made to your channel lineup. Universal HD will cease transmission of this channel on all service levels on or about July 14, 2017. The Olympic channel will be launched on SSP Tier 1, which is silver level of service, and SD and HD on or about July 14, 2017. For a complete lineup, visit spectrum.com channels. To view this online, visit spectrum.net programming notices. If you have any questions, you can reach uh, Anna Lucy at charter.com or you can call her at 774-243-9735. Now we have one from Joseph Leveriero, Sr. of 10 Cape Avenue. 
He would like to do some metal detecting on the common if I can. I would donate any relics I find to the town as part of its history. I can be reached at email at olivierasenior at hotmail.com or by phone at 508-867-9508 for any other questions. Thank you. I don't see any problem with that board now, but um, I'm just curious of a past practice. I, yes, I, I think. Yes, people. Yeah. What didn't allow it? They said no. Oh, they didn't allow it. No, they didn't. But, but they didn't. I know there have been says. people, I've seen them all over town. What do with that? I'm sure. Uh, I'd say so long as he, uh, I'm wondering if, if we require some nominal bond from him to make sure he doesn't do any turf damage in the case of trying to recover any artifacts. I, I, I don't know if we refer back to the, the Bannister Committee is still in place, right? Are they? No. I don't think so. They made a point because they, they, they haven't been they active had, so long. Isn't that isn't there a bylaw on that? Isn't there a bylaw about no no detecting on the common? It's been no for years. No 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 no. That's what you all said. No no. Oh, it's been no. I don't think I don't know if it's. I don't think there's a bylaw. No, I don't think there's a bylaw. I don't remember reading it, but I can check. I don't ever remember. Ken. No, somebody requested it years ago and you know turned it down. Yeah. That they've always been turned down. Okay. No, it's no bylaw, right? As I've read, I've read through them many a times. There's yeah, no I was going to say, not to, to no, the best of my knowledge, there's, there's nothing in there specific so to metal detecting. If it's on never been property. allowed before, then I'll say that, you know, we're not going to allow it this time. Yeah. So, Karen, if you just wanted to, you know, give him a, a note, write it back and tell him. Okay, that's, that's it. That, let's see, what are we going to pay for time? Three more minutes, or can we open it up? We want to wait to see if any more butters arrive. Yeah, we, we do. We, we have do to leave. Yeah, we have yeah. to wait. We get three that. more minutes. Okay. Uh, does the gentleman who is um, going to be operating uh, Brookfield Auto is he here? I am here on his behalf. He's okay. Not here. Okay, would you like to come up and sit, please? Uh, he actually requested that uh, if there was something else on the agenda, if we could uh, attend that first. He is running about 10 minutes late due to traffic. I didn't hear you, sir. He's, uh, he's, running, he's, he's running, running late. He's running about 10 minutes late due to traffic. He's okay. requesting if there's something else on the agenda. Mm -hmm. maybe able to, like, do you want to recess for 10 minutes? Yeah. Or can I do an other and sit on the other side? Is it too late to do that? And other, what are we? <laughs> I'd like to bring up our problem on Point Box Street. Oh. Okay, I'll come over here. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. We're back to Coy Box Street now. Okay. okay. All right. I'd like to bring up the racetrack at Five Coy Box Street. Uh, it's he said it's practice sessions down there, but. Um, He's, they're going all day long. There's no hours set for them to be down there. I've called the environmental police and they, they take your name and number and they say, we'll get back to you. And it's just an all day thing that goes on till eight o'clock at night and it doesn't stop. And it, 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 in Sundays you can hear the noise in the house. And I, mean, I know we're going back to court with them on July 26th about this, but I mean, he's running a business down there. He doesn't have any permits from what I understand, and I don't think he should be down there doing that. And he's disturbing a lot of people. More people have been stepping up than when we originally had this. So the only thing that I understood from when we went around on this the last yeah. time is from an enforcement perspective, it was noise and that there are certain criteria of off-road vehicles yeah. that are required by yeah. Mass General Law, that 96 dBA of a new bike, 108 by an old bike, but that, that the environmental police were or are to enforce that noise level. So do we have any further information on noise level? Uh, my husband has been keeping a chart. So, we, so we have a log of... Yeah, he's been keeping, yeah, he has been. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it just seems you call the environmental police, and I did happen to find somebody, it was a week ago this past Sunday, and she did answer, and she said she would have somebody check it out, and she would have them call me back, and I didn't hear anything at all.
from them. And he was even, he, one thing I can say, he was courteous on 4th of July. He wasn't up there on the 4th. But I mean, he's at Saturdays, Sundays, it, it goes on all the time. Yeah. And he, so I, think we... should, I think it should be checked out. I mean, he's, he's uh, been advertising on his website. He's charging for these people to come down there and practice. So he is running a business. And then he also has a showroom you can, he's had that on, um, that's been online too. He's got a showroom where he sells the uh, bikes. He sells dirt bikes down there. He has also the, um, the suits that you have to wear, the helmets, the whole works. So as a, as a vendor in town, and I, forgive me for not being familiar with, with our own bylaws regarding that, do they need any should type of vendor license? Permit, sure. Yeah, he's got to get some permits. He should come up. I don't even know if he's registered businesses his business here with the town. And that'd be registered with the town clerk? With the town clerk. The town clerk. But so, and you had the original order of conditions of the Conservation Commission with the DEP was supposed to be a, a noise barrier. Uh -huh. It's like a 10 or 12 foot wall. He never put one up. He, he, put, did. he did some kind of a six foot wall down there. But I think that was just to keep the banking up. That's right. all he did. Yeah, and I was wondering about that because I know that noise yeah. barriers no, can be a part of it, but no. he hasn't installed it. No, he has a six foot one back. And what it does, it just holds the wall up. It's not actually a noise barrier. Right. Yeah, they've done nothing. No, There's nothing down there. I had DEP come down again. Mm -hmm. I had Judith Schmidt come down and look at it. There was nothing wrong with it. I said, well, it shouldn't be there. No, 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 no. I had a question. Would you share with us what, what was decided in court, Linda? That was we got a court decision from the town, correct? Uh, there was a court decision in the town, was a, and yeah. it was legal for what he's doing there, correct? Yeah, he, it was legal, legal right? but we're supposed to be going back to court to find out just what hours he's going to be allowed to do. I didn't, uh, yes, I would, you should. The court, the court we're going decision. back to court with it, and we're, I don't know. If There's a determination, a determination of, hours. of hours, but the hours are going to be. Yeah, clarification on there. Yeah, original. we have to find out the clarifications of what's going on. But it's very aggravating. It bothers the, it, it travels over the water. It's bothering people um, that live up like Boys Avenue by us. It's, it's coming down the whole lake area. So it, it's it, it's noise. It's noise. And, and so I think. But if you would like, if you could share your log with me, I mm -hmm. will do the calculations that okay. I did the, the first time okay. so that we can turn around and then forward them off to the local rep to put some pressure on environmental police to follow up. Right, well, and I think I don't we maybe know if need he, to get with the zone I don't board. know if he would. I think Ann Gobi would be better off because uh, Mr. Uh, I mean, Representative Berthium is a farmer dirt bike rider. <laughs> So I don't know. So I think we go should for, go, go for well, both. Well, I, we but, should but go actually, with. we should go for both because, frankly, people who are responsible riders actually want people to be compliant so that there's less mm -hmm. resistance against getting yeah. the ride. So I'd right. say you, you, if you can, if, if you can convert, convince anybody to support it, sometimes it's just like yeah. responsible hunters. Responsible hunters don't like yahoos that go out there shooting people's dogs. You know. So so. If you if you could th through the admin, give me a copy of the log. Okay. I'll do the calculations as I did the, the original set okay. of logs, but which proved that he was out of compliance. Yeah, he absolutely yeah. was out of compliance, and that it's now time to go to the environmental police to say that here is now a log of these readings, yeah. and the this is the the calculation yeah. based on this, and it's suggesting that the vehicles are not in compliance and have the uh, environmental police, as they're charged to do, enforce the law. I mean, we, we've been putting up with this since uh, probably 1982. It's been a long time. And then they did did have a brief period of time where they weren't there at all. So so, but, so do we have, like, basically three different levels of noncompliance? We have noncompliance on the noise. Right. We have noncompliance on... Uh, offering stuff for sale on a premises that doesn't currently have a business license once yeah. we verify that with the town clerk. Yep. Okay. And then it sounds like we have a non-compliance with Zoning Board of Appeals conditions of operations with yeah. regards to putting up an appropriate noise barrier that conforms with the 10-foot the requirement. But that's, that's what Jeff, though, isn't it? Building inspector. Yeah, for the I think he well, had. It's an order of condition. But it's an order of condition. Oh, that's from the order of condition from the order of appeals. So, um, 
So I think Jeff would enforce it in some ways. Yeah, Jeff would enforce it. He'd go down and or look he'd, at or it. Or he'd verify it. Because he was the one that came back and said that it was only a six-foot wall and that it was there just to keep you know, the walls up. It wasn't a noise barrier. Right. And right. I know the zoning enforcement officer has been down there also. So at least let's start off with the noise. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. What yes, but I'm sitting over here okay. though as a private Mr. citizen, Mr. All right, Clarence. What did the actual court say to the town of Brookfield about him operating down there? Oh, that he was that he he's, he's legal to operate. To operate. Now, now just for if, 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 but just for practice so sessions, not races. Say that we could have had to say because we did due diligence the way we were supposed to from the get go. So I think I think what he's doing is legal. He's only doing practice sessions. That's, That's all he can do. That's correct. He is legal to operate in compliance to Mass General Law. What we've been chatting about here for a couple of years <coughs> is that his riders are out of compliance because we have well, we've got readings. A log of we have a log of readings of the decibel levels on the street, calculating back to what should be a decibel. The readings that Linda originally received were in the 90s and low hundreds of decibel uh, levels. So that we had that um, information when we first, we, the town bought a decibel meter, that's what the readings were. If you take 100 dBA and you move it back to the 20 inches that it's supposed to be measured at, that the bikes were running about 130 dBA. That's out of compliance. I don't think, that, I don't think that's accurate what you're saying, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. So okay. we I don't want to confuse you with the facts, Mr. Holcraft. There's not the facts. Well, uh, Mike Baraka, the co-chair of the conservation, knows some of the other guys on the environmental police, and they went down there twice. They, he had them go down twice, and there was four guys down there, and half the kids that were running there weren't old enough to be on the bikes. And it was like eight or ten kids that haven't had, in Massachusetts, they have to have so many so hours of mm -hmm. riding, and none of them did, so he pulled it down twice. So it's time for them to go back down. Yep, I think it is. Yep. So okay, well, thank you for hearing me out. All right, and it's... Oh, we are. How close are we now? How, where is he in route? I will have to check this. Okay. Well, why don't we do a recess for like five, five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five All right. Minutes check it out. Yeah, I'll make a motion to recess. Yes, and I'll take a second. And we're uh, recessed for the next five minutes. Oh, or so. Or so. We'd like to reconvene the meeting at 7.44 p.m. And I would like to entertain a motion to open the Class 2 license hearing. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we're going to have it's a public hearing on uh, Tuesday, July 11, 2017 for Class 2 license. It's Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Mass. 01506. In accordance with Massachusetts general law, please be advised a public hearing will be held at 7.30, which it's not, it was 7.44, on Tuesday, July 11, 2017, in the Banquet Hall in the Brookfield Town Hall, 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass. This hearing is for the application for a Class 2 or seller's license by Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Massachusetts. Ah. And we have a representative here from uh, Brookfield Auto, and if you'd like to um, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Boris Saprosnikov, and i um, the owner of the LLC. Yes. Okay. Uh, can, can you, uh, we've seen that you've been doing a lot of work down there, and yes. you've been sprucing the place up, and so maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, well, basically, we, we did the renovations, you know, so the place looks nice, so it's accessible, you know, and basically to service the people around <laughs> in surrounding areas, and, uh, you know, I would like the facility to be nice. Uh, we did some paving in front, we're going to do a little more, a little bit later, but for now, the building, you know, we just went through main systems of the building, make sure everything is working, you know, good working order. And that's basically it for now. So, so you're going to have like all uh, used autos? Or you're gonna yes, have used. Used autos? Mm -hmm. okay. Used only. Oh. Are you going to be doing stickers? Yes, but unfortunately Massachusetts decided not to do anything until October. They're redoing the program. 
So as soon as it's available, yes. Oh, so you are like going to be doing yes. the stickers? Yes, oh, as soon as good. it's available. Yeah, yeah, because we used to do, they used to yeah. do them down at one time. Yeah, that's we good. would love to, as soon as possible, but they closed the program until October 1st. Okay, would no you like to say anything else about the business that you're going to operate? Well, we I mean, <laughs> would like to, you know, service everybody as that's best good. as we can, and we're going to have, um, you know, uh, auto repair and auto body repair too. So, you know. Hopefully nobody needs it that much, but you never know. Okay, well, we welcome you to town yep, in the new thank business. You. Okay, do we have any of the abutters that are here that would like to speak? Mr. W Mr. Blaze, would you like to speak? There's not much more to say. I mean, uh, to, my, uh, to my knowledge, none of the zoning, the zoning laws, the bylaws have ever been approached to talk about. So. From what it sounds like to me, it's, it's cut and dry. I mean, he's got the, he's got the, the, the permit and the license to, to operate, and there's no, there's, I have no clout. I mean, well, I mean, he hasn't got the license he yet. This is, license. He hasn't got the license yet. What we're doing, this is the hearing about it, and we asked uh, any of the, but he, he sent out notices to any of the abutters who were within 300 feet of the property to come down here and voice their opinions. Well, why, why would somebody go through the expense of doing all the renovations if he hadn't even got a permit to, to work? No, I mean, it's almost like it's, 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 it's cut and dry. It's almost like they've been accepted. We I, haven't I accepted it. We haven't, we haven't even. And, and, and get denied. Well, we haven't even voted on this yet. This is, we're having a hearing. This is what the hearing's for tonight. Well, it seems like I'm the only neighbor here from Maple Street. But from my point of view, as far as, uh, I understand that you have a license to operate. I understand that, you know, it's business zone. Well, he doesn't have it yet. But the thing I have to, I have to caution, whether it's Brookfield Motors or whether it's the new Lisa or, 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 or sorry, the buyer, is that your lot adjoins a neighborhood, mm -hmm. an adjacent neighborhood. It's a very quiet neighborhood. And I, for one, and the neighbors agree, but somehow they won't speak up. Um, we kind of like it quiet. We like it neat. I mean, uh, with Brookfield Motors, there's been a lot of debris. There's been a lot of construction going on, a lot of the, the construction, which, which is very disturbing to the neighborhood, from my point of view. And I'm right there on your fence. Matter of fact, one day last week, one of your, one of your employees, whatever you employed to do the construction, I'm sitting there, and they're playing their music, and I'm saying, wow. I mean, I'm 40% deaf. And so I went over, I asked him to quiet down the music, and I said, I hope this is not going to be a, uh, you know, a potential of what's going to happen in the future, as far as being quiet, uh, unnecessary noise. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not sure exactly what, what this entails. But I know from my point of view, as a, as a resident, adjacent to Bayou Maple Street, mm -hmm. We like it quiet. I can assure it's going to be as quiet as any dealership operation or even quieter. And I like quiet too. And if there's any unnecessary debris or whatever it is that's in the backyard, no. it was originally suggested, but it never went through, that they put up a privacy fence so we're not subjected to the, you know, to the. the we, don't, we don't even plan on any debris. There shouldn't be any debris. There should be cars for sale, that's it. Are you planning to use the backyard? Yeah, but only for storage of the cars, nothing else. Because I noticed that you know, the gate has been closed for years. And well, I the other day you opened up the Yeah, backyard. just to make it work. <laughs> you know, to oil it a little bit. You know, I, I like things to work if they're there. Okay. You know, <laughs> I don't like them to be forgotten. <laughs> so, but no, this, as far as the debris, there's not going to be any debris. Unless you consider cars debris, but uh, they're just used cars, nothing else. And That's you're, what. You're, you're allowed to operation is going to be like 8 to 5, 8 to 6, 8 to 7? Uh, you know, it's for convenience of people. Sometimes, you know, somebody's working, they might drop at 6, 7. I mean, sometimes people after work, you know, they come and they want to take a look at cars, whatever. But it does not include any noise. I mean, you know, it's going to be in the showroom, if anything. And, you know, if we have to show the car, I mean, you know, the only noise is going to be if you start the engine. I mean, that's just, you know, there's not going to be any, anything special going on. It's just vehicles that are stored there and, you know, whenever we need to take one out to show, that's the only what would noise. Your, what would your service hours be? Service is probably going to be until 6. Okay. 
Like I said, because of the convenience, you know, a lot of people are working, they can't make it. You know. So what time would you open in the morning? Did you <coughs> Eight. Eight in the morning. Okay. I will see if there's demand, we'll open early. You know, it depends. I mean, seven is a possibility, but we're not playing right now. Eight is more like it. We're just waiting for the administrative assistant to come back because I saw her. She made a mistake on the date, so she'll be right back. Okay. So that we could sign. So the, the, the question and Roland's concern, neighbor concern, mm -hmm. was that there were a number of vehicles that were uh, not uh, in service that were just left on the back fence. And it was left there for a very long period of time. I know. If, and, and if those kinds of things could be. I don't like it avoided. myself, but unfortunately, it's the owner's vehicles of the lot. Right. So if that's of a concern of some sort, I mean, we put them in the back and we try to keep them like, you know, together in the back. There's like three of them or whatever. But if it's ever a concern, I mean, I can talk to him and see if we can maybe remove them off the lot. I don't like them myself, but, yeah, you know, if we're if not the owners of the building. If it's possible, that has been okay. an irritant of the neighbors for a very no problem. long time. Yeah. I so can talk that, to him. If, if that's something that could be... Uh, Address. I'm sure address, something could be addressed. That would be very helpful. I just, you know, in the beginning stage, we didn't bother too much, but, Understood. you know, again, not even our vehicle, so okay. oh, I would never keep something like this in there. Okay. <laughs> just you understand that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the Class 2 license for Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Mass., for his used car dealer's license two, to buy and sell secondhand motor vehicles, and this will uh, expire on December 31st, 2017. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make that motion. No, I'll second. Any discussion on this? No. All in favor? Aye. Very well, mm -hmm. try. Yeah. Also? Better, better than a big lot, that's for sure. Listen, it's gonna look nice, you wish. <laughs> Please, you can we'll wait, because we're gonna give you a license. We'll give the license to Oh, you. today? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. She's just going to run and make a quick copy, and then she'll be right back. He's already paid his fee. Mm -hmm. And he has all the requirements, and you can look through his application. Hey, everything. I know you have everything. Yeah, good. Okay. The only thing is, like you say, it expires in December. Yeah. Do we apply in January? Yeah, just make sure he knows. Just make sure he knows that. Yeah. <coughs> So if you have a copy, then do we want to do a motion to adjourn? Yep, I'd like a motion, and it's a motion to adjourn the meeting at, at 7.54. 7.54. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye.